Hello dear students, I am Dr. Moinuddin. In this video, we are going to discuss inductively coupled plasma atomic emission spectroscopy. And this is the part 3 of this technique. In previous two parts, we have discussed different aspects of this technique. So if you didn't watch those parts, then I am putting their link in the i button in the top right corner so you can watch uh, by following that before starting the video if you didn't subscribe my channel yet then subscribe it right now and the press and press the bell icon so you can get in touch with my upcoming videos and here are the contents of current video so in this video actually we are going to discuss about the sample introduction system and then we are going to see about a large variety of nebulizers which are being used in inductively coupled plasma atomic emission spectroscopy so we will see about pneumatic nebulizers and we'll take its two examples so we'll see concentric nebulizers and cross flow nebulizers then we will see some other designs of nebulizers which are being in practice in this technique and they include corrosion resistant nebulizers ultrasonic nebulizers babington type nebulizers and fretted disc nebulizers so let's get started so let's start with sample introduction sample introduced in inductively coupled plasma could be in any state that is solid liquid or gas means our sample could be in any state whether it is solid liquid or in gaseous state it can be introduced in inductively coupled plasma but generally the sample is introduced in the form of solution and the most common method of introducing solution is in the form of fine aerosol mean the uh, sample solution that is actually introduced in ICP is in in the form of fine droplets mixed in air which is called aerosol and these are usually generated by the use of a pneumatic nebulizer so what is a pneumatic nebulizer a pneumatic nebulizer is an instrument used for converting a liquid into a fine spray using a gas as the driving force so actually by the use of the pressurized gas the liquid sample is converted into fine droplets or mist and there are several nebulizer designs which are being used for icp Two most commonly used pneumatic nebulizers are concentric nebulizers and cross-flow designs or cross-flow nebulizers. Both designs depend on the high velocity of argon gas flow and this gas is actually termed as nebulizer gas or carrier gas. And actually this carrier gas creates a low pressure zone into which sample solution is drawn through the capillary tube and subsequently that is at moist into droplets of varying sizes by the force of the flowing gas so by the use of the pressure of this gas actually this sample is shattered into fine droplets and these droplets definitely these are of different sizes and the size distribution of the droplets generally ranges from 0.1 to 100 micrometer in diameter so droplets are produced in different sizes but among these droplets only 10 micrometer or smaller diameter droplets can be effectively desolvated dissociated at moist and excited in the residence time of a few milliseconds in the plasma then what about the larger droplets so larger droplets actually these contribute to excessively noisy analytical signal and 
another effect they generate actually they cool the plasma by introduction of too much water so larger droplets actually these are the problematic droplets so these must be removed and how these are removed actually by passing aerosol through a spray chamber this spray chamber actually it is a device which is kept after nebulize nebulizer and it screen out the droplets so we'll see it in detail in the next video and before transport into the plasma by the carrier gas so this spray chamber actually it is kept uh, after nebulizer and before uh, before the transport of 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 the droplets into the plasma so let's see the concentric nebulizer now so this is how actually it looks like so concentric nebulizer is also known as mean hard nebulizer and it is constructed of borosilicate glass so you can see here is another diagram of it which is shown over here so it is made up of borosilicate glass its basic model uses an argon flow of one liter per minute at a line pressure of 275 kilopascal or 40 psi through an outer annulus as low pressure draws the sample solution through the inner tube at 1 to 2 ml per minute so here we can see here is the outer tube and this is the inner capillary so through this outer tube here the argon gas flow at the rate of one liter per minute so it flows over here and draws the sample through the capillary at the rate of one to two ml per minute and this is the close view of this one and this is the frontal view so this is the inner capillary and this is the outer tube so here the gas is flowing and here the sample is coming so now by the use of the pressure of gas the sample which is coming through the inner capillary so that is shattered into fine droplets over here these nebulizers perform well over extended times but with dilute aqueous solutions but there are some problems as well let's see what are these fine dimensions of sample capillary and gas annulus may cause the nebulizer prone to blockage by small particles in the sample solution or in argon gas supply means the tubes the capillary tubes these are very much fine so they may be easily blocked by some impurities present in the sample or in gas supply so it may stop or change the sample and gas flow making signals erroneous another problem may be due to high salts contents in the sample solutions so what is the problem with the concentrated solutions a phenomena known as salting up may occur by which aspirated droplets deposit on the exterior of the nebulizer tip and evaporate leaving behind the dry deposit that partially blocks the tip and changes the sample and gas flows mean the desolvation process that may occur on the tip of nebulizer and that may result in deposition of salts on the nebulizer tip so there will be the phenomena of blockage again so what is the remedy so many instruments incorporate means of reducing this problem by humidifying the nebulizer gas and washing the tip between samples so using these remedies the problem can be solved another pneumatic nebulizer is the cross flow nebulizer so it is another common pneumatic nebulizer 
The sample and gas capillary are mounted at right angles to each other. So here are the diagrams we can see. So here is the sample capillary which is kept vertically and here is the argon capillary which is kept horizontally so both of these are mounted at right angles and uh, here is the close view of these capillaries and here is another diagram in which sample capillary is adjusted horizontally while gas capillary is adjusted vertically so they are at right angle and here is the nebulization this mounting may be fixed or adjustable the adjustable mounting allows for optimization means where the best result of nebulization are obtained so there uh, they can be adjust they can be uh, they are adjustable but may be difficult to maintain for long term reproducibility and these mean cross flow nebulizers are less subject to salting up phenomena as compared to concentric nebulizers now we will see some other designs of nebulizers so first of all we'll see the corrosion resistant nebulizers and it is shown over here it look like this so there are also these are also available for the analysis of the sample solutions prepared in concentrated acid though most of the sample solutions are prepared in aqueous medium so generally the solutions prepared in the concentrated acid they are analyzed by using these type of nebulizers which are called corrosion resistant nebulizers then various extraction procedures require sample preparation in acidic medium or even in organic solvents so such samples can also be analyzed using these nebulizers introduction of such solutions into plasma may be done with some modifications in operating parameters like operating at high power etc so there are some modifications in the procedure and uh, such samples can also be analyzed by in inductively coupled plasma another one is the ultrasonic nebulizers though it exhibits favorable performance but is not commonly used the sample solution is passed over the surface of an ultrasonic transducer resulting the generation of fine aerosol and the nebulizer efficiency is high as sample is delivered into plasma at higher rate mean major part of the sample is delivered into the plasma however greater quantity of water is also delivered generating the cooling effect so there is a problem that if the major portion of the sample is delivered into plasma this actually causes the delivery of large amount of water which causes the cooling effect another problem with this nebulizer is the memory effect and what is the memory effect it is actually the persistence of a signal after removing the sample and what is the reason it is due to some difficulty in effective cleaning of the nebulizer between solutions I mean we have analyzed a, a sample and we got the signal then uh, we have put another sample but the previous sample is not properly removed from the nebulizer so this is called memory effect so these disadvantages and a relatively high price of this nebulizer have hindered acceptance of this technique another type is the Bebbington nebulizer in this type the sample solution flows freely over a small orifice through through which the high velocity nebulizer gas flows producing an aerosol so it looks like this 
so here is the sample which is flowing over here and it is making it is flowing freely and making the film over it and and there is a gas which is flowing inside this one and there is an orifice means small hole so this pressurized gas is coming out of this hole and producing the sample uh, converting the sample into aerosol major advantage of this is that the sample does not travel through the capillary so there is no capillary so higher salts or dissolved solids can be nebulized without blocking or salting up so blockage or salting up phenomena it can be avoided here and these Babington type nebulizer this may also be used to nebulize the slurries of solid samples so this is also another advantage of this one another design is the fitted disk nebulizer in this type the solution is pumped onto the surface of a fine glass frit the nebulizer gas is made to flow from the back side of the frit generating the aerosol so here is the diagram so sample solution is made to pour on this fine glass frit and the nebulizer gas is made to flow from the back side so high pressure and this sample solution is converted into aerosol high efficiencies are obtained due to small droplet size allowing the analysis of small solution volume but there is problem as well and that is the memory effect due to difficulty in cleaning the frit between solutions so it's a huge problem with this fritted disk nebulizer so dear students this was all about today's lecture but uh, hope hope you did understand it well so if you like it then like my video but the technique is not over yet so you need to stuck on my channel so if you didn't subscribe my channel yet then subscribe it right now so you can get in touch with my upcoming videos uh, upcoming next parts relating this technique so thanks for watching thank you very much